There are many differences between riding on a machine in the gym and being on the open trail. Out here, the scenery is better, the smells are better, and I feel I'm going somewhere. Yet so many friends raise the same disadvantage when they talk to me. I hate having to wear a helmet. How can something that looks so lame even protect me? Why should I wear a helmet? Well, let me tell you what I tell them. The simple answer is yes, you should wear one. According to the World Health Organization reported 2020, 60% of bicycle related long-term disabilities and deaths were a result of head injuries where no protection was worn. So the mathematics say you should wear one, but how it actually protects you is a problem for material science. So the first thing you notice about a helmet is that unlike a motorcycle helmet, it has these ventilation holes in it. Now they actually make it structurally weaker, so the materials and design that we use are actually more important. Let's take a look at these materials from the inside. It's never that easy. A typical helmet has two main parts, a hard outer shell and a soft inner liner. The hard shell is designed to crack on impact and spread the force of an impact over a broader area. The outside is typically made of composite materials like lightweight carbon fibre or very hard plastics like polycarbonate. The same material we use in Blu-ray discs. Ideally, you want something that has excellent strength and hardness characteristics, yet can be easily formed, moulded and even recycled. So the liner is about an inch thick and it's made of two layers. Firstly, a soft, bouncy material that just takes the knocks and bumps. The thicker material is often the more protective one. In an impact, this permanently deforms. It absorbs all of the impact that normally would be taken by your brain. That's pretty useful. However, once that foam has become deformed, it won't squash nicely next time it has an impact. It leaves a gap and that ceases to protect you. This is why you shouldn't buy a second-hand helmet. Even if it looks good on the outside, you don't know whether that polystyrene inside has been compressed, particularly with the cheaper materials like polystyrene. If only there was a solution that material science could offer. So sometimes it's actually worth paying a little bit more for your helmet. Some modern helmets are incorporating energy absorbing materials, things like D3O. Now that sounds quite fancy, but you've probably already come across something very similar. Yeah, cornflour or oobleck. And this is great. It works like a liquid. It's all runny. But as soon as you apply a force to it, it hardens up. Nobody wants a helmet made of custard. And yet, D3O in these advanced materials don't go bad like these food products do. But the best thing about them is that because they're liquid, they actually mould to the shape of your individual head. Plus, when you apply a force, when that impact protection is needed, those forces are spread out because it hardens. Let me show you how that works. Was I just lucky, or did material science just save my fingers? Of course, the good thing about this is that once it's actually been impacted upon and that force has been released, it goes back to being its liquid shape again. And that's great because it means that we don't need to replace those inner liners once they've been compressed. Think about all the applications where we might want to use this. Things like body armour, things like gloves, anywhere where we need protection, but we also want some comfort. Think about other places we might want to use it. Maybe the suspension of the bike. Then it'll be nice and liquid when there's little force applied. But it becomes firm when we need that support. So we call these types of fluids non-Newtonian fluids. They're able to change their viscosity or their runniness when we put pressure on them. What happens here is we have long chains of starch, a polymer of glucose. Now they're okay when they're liquid, they just flow around each other. But when forced, they jam into each other and that causes it to feel solid. Nobody wants to be riding around with a helmet full of custard. 
So which is the helmet that you should buy? Maybe you can't afford one of these more advanced materials. Here's some suggestions. Get one that has that hard outer shell and that soft inner liner. Remember to replace it if that gets damaged though. Secondly, get one that fits you properly. And finally, make sure you look good in it because otherwise you're not even going to wear it. Those three things, keep them in mind. But in this case, always keep an eye out for what material science is doing in the background for you. Happy riding.